four, three, two, one. Happy New Year. <laughs> You're all on the same wave. That's good. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Robin Gomez, City of Madeira Beach City Manager. If anybody's curious what that means, I work for the elected officials, the mayor and the city commission. There are five of them total. They are the legislative body of the city, and I am the executive body of the city. I oversee the day-to-day -day operations of the services that the city provides. So our fire, public works, our community development, recreation, et cetera. And if anybody's curious, we, we do not directly provide police. We contract with Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. That's why those that do live here, you'll see Pinellas County Sheriff's deputies driving around, walking around, chasing the bad guys, et cetera. So, but just a quick overview. I've been the city manager here for five months now. Extremely happy to be here. I came here from the Atlanta area. Before that, I was in West Virginia. And before that, I started my career and spent my first 21 years at a city just up the road, little small city. They house an aquarium. I forget the name, the, the Clearwater Marina. I worked for the city of Clearwater for 21 years. So, but very happy to be back here in Pinellas County. Again, thank you all very much for taking a little bit of your time this Saturday morning. This is our inaugural sea turtle nesting expo, an idea that came out of, we hold every year a hurricane expo where we encourage people to prepare, be ready for those storms that tend to hit Florida over the years. Um, I actually went to college at the University of Miami undergrad, so we're the hurricanes. So. Uh, we don't share that with too many people, but no, just kidding. So thank you also to our staff that are here from my office, our public works, our recreation, and of course our sheriff's deputy that is here today. But really, and all the organizations that are here from the Clearwater Marine Aquarium, Alligator Wildlife Discovery Center, the Water Warrior Alliance, Trash Pirates, and the Trash Turtles, and Keep Pinellas Beautiful. So you'll hear from a representative from each one of those organizations. So I've said enough for today. If at any time any of you have any questions, obviously about sea turtle nesting season, do not ask me. I'm not the expert. There are quite a bit of experts around here. But if you want any suggestions, ideas, assistance on what the city does and what we promote, by all means, please, please feel free to ask myself or any of our staff that are here. Our goal is simply to make sure that Madeira Beach is, continues to be a great place to live, learn, work, and play. And of course, we want to keep it as clean and beautiful as possible. Love having events here on the veranda, etc. So also, we are celebrating our 75th anniversary as a city. That is why we are giving away to residents and businesses. We, the Trash Pirates, are giving away a bucket with the picker and it has their sticker with the logo that has our 75th anniversary logo. You'll see uh, various employees wearing shirts with our logo. So again, thank you all for coming out and I'll turn it over to Clearwater Marine Aquarium, the best place in aquariums around in the area, I have to say. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for having me. My name is Lindsay Flynn. I'm the manager of the Sea Turtle Conservation Program at Clearwater Marine Aquarium. So our group is responsible for monitoring for all the sea turtle nesting activity, both here in the city of Madeira and about 21 miles of beaches here in Pinellas County. So that's from starting in Clearwater, going all the way through Treasure Island, actually. So if you happen to see us monitoring out there, come say hello. We love talking to you. So. Um, we do our work under two uh, marine turtle permits that are issued to us by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Um, it is illegal to interact with sea turtles otherwise. They're protected um, under state law by the um, Marine Turtle Protection Act and federally through the Endangered Species Act. So we actually couldn't do what we do unless FWC gave us those permits. So um, that's why we're allowed to do that work. Um, so what we do is we monitor every morning. We start half hour before sunrise and we use ATVs and UTVs to look for activity left behind from the turtle the night before. So that's those tracks that you might see in the sand. That's what we look for. 
And then we determine whether it's a nest, so were eggs laid at that site, or was it a false crawl? Did she come up and leave the beach without laying any eggs? Um, we take data from all those types of activities, because that's important data that FWC can use to sort of monitor the nesting activity uh, here in Madeira and throughout the county. So when we do identify a nest, you might see um, something like this. So we use these wooden stakes to mark off the nest and use this signage to indicate that this is a sea turtle nest. Please don't come in here. Please don't disturb it. You'll also notice that we have these signs at our nest this year. So it kind of gives um, tourists or residents a few guidelines uh, for being mindful of our turtle nest. So don't use any lights, don't touch it, and don't disturb it. You'll also notice that there's a couple of phone numbers down at the bottom of these signs that say, hey, if you have any concerns about these nests, please don't hesitate to call either one of these numbers and report it. Um, so we're really trying to encourage people to not disturb our nests and not disturb our nesting females or our hatchlings and rather report them. So if you, you have a concern, you see somebody interacting with a nest, call those numbers. Um, if you see somebody interacting with a sea turtle that is against the law, I highly encourage you to call 911 and get Deputy Snyder out there and he'll take care of them. <laughs> Um, you'll also notice these signs at all of your public beach accesses. Um, this is another way that we can help tourists and residents sort of guide them in what they should and shouldn't be doing uh, near our nests. So um, again, don't touch them, don't disturb them, don't use lights. Um, fill in your holes and knock down sandcastles. Um, I've been told by a couple of residents just this morning that holes seem to be an issue in the city. Um, so kind of we're trying to work with everyone we talk to to fill in their holes because our hatchlings are only a few inches long so they can fall in those holes and they can't get out and tourists don't know that so we try and talk to them about how important it is to fill in those holes at the end of the day to help our hatchlings get to the water um, easily. Um, the other thing that people can do to help sea turtles nest successfully besides filling in their holes and knocking down their sandcastles and taking off their trash is um, lighting. Uh, so sea turtles actually use brightness as a guide to find the water. So when they're done nesting or they've come out of the nest for the first time, they're going to use brightness as a guide to find the water. So normally under a na natural conditions, moonlight and starlight are bouncing off the water at night, creating this nice, beautiful horizon that they can follow right towards the water. Um, we're the most densely populated county in the entire state of Florida, so there's lots of people here, and we like to use artificial white light to help us get around at night. Um, unfortunately, that white light competes with celestial light and confuses sea turtles, so they think that artificial light is where the water is. So we find them in pools and parking lots and roadways and run over by cars because they thought that that light was where the water was. The good news is, is we're working with our cities um, to make the change towards sea turtle friendly light. That's light in the amber and red spectrum that sea turtles are actually less confused by. And if you want to see a demonstration of what that looks like, I really encourage you to visit our table outside here. We have a really interesting lighting display that shows you the difference between white light and sea turtle friendly light. We actually have a way to show you how sea turtles interpret that light. Um, so you can see how, how beneficial sea turtle friendly light is. So uh, with that, I thank you so much for listening to me rattle on all morning. Um, and I'm going to let somebody from the city talk next. Thank you. Thank you. That is the, thank you, Lindsay. That's a, and yes, and that's the next part of the program or the seminar was to discuss that, yes, Madeira Beach, like most of the other cities along, especially on the barrier islands, do have ordinances that detail the type of lighting that can, that you should use. And we have a sea turtle conservation zone that actually stipulates that lighting shall be shielded and, and not facing toward the western part of, of Gulf Boulevard. So it's actually our, in the city code under section 110, uh, if anybody, I mean, it's, it's not very long, the actual code, but it's pretty specific 
as to the type the types of lighting and where it can go. Now, we are currently renewing our franchise agreement with Duke Energy, and we would like to incorporate some language in there. Duke Energy is, uh, they're, they're fine with some of it, but they believe that it's very difficult, particularly to request some of the requirements for private residences. But yes, we've heard, I think this past week, maybe in the last two weeks, of at least one property here that some residents believe that their lighting is too bright. So we are reviewing that, and, and our deputies typically review uh, where the how bright a property might be. Now, do we we don't have the actual measuring device? We may actually go purchase a. I want to call it Lumiere, like Lumiere and the uh, from the, the a spectrometer. Thank you. So we we should have one, and that would help um, to ensure that properties are, don't have too much light. For those of you who do live here on the on the island. The if you do drive down to 143rd, 144th, where there's a speedway gas station, their lighting is very faint. I've actually had uh, visitors there. They don't. They're just driving through and they put gas. And they're like, "Why are their lights not working?" And I explained these are the turtle-friendly lights that so it keeps the turtles from wanting to cross, um, go across the county park because right across the street is a parking lot, but it's actually uh, owned and maintained by Pinellas County, not the city of, of Madeira. So all of you who live in Madeira Beach, your resident parking permit pass does not work at that lot. Uh, but it, that's, that's the premise behind having the ordinance to ensure that the residents do, all the buildings do comply with that. Any, anyone else have any other questions while we... So moving... Along, uh, I won't get into too much of the detail of the ordinance, but it, again, it, there is a lot of information about it on our website, including information on, on sea turtle nesting, pretty much quite a bit of what you're going to hear this morning. But I'll call up our public works and our deputies, and they can, the next part, to explain what we do and how we keep the sand clean and a little bit of the enforcement. So we have Megan. Wepfer, our Public Works Director, and Deputy Corey Snyder of the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. Good morning. So I'm here to talk about what the Public Works Department does. So every morning during nesting season, we call the Clearwater Marine Aquarium to see if the beach is clear. Once the beach is clear, my staff then goes out, empties the garbage. We, you'll see our beach rake out there. Currently, right now, I'm waiting for my new surf rake, so you'll see a, just a temporary one. And then from there, we clean the beach we try to fill in the holes. Uh, we know the holes are an issue. We're doing our best. We are also trying to educate the visitors. Uh, we're actually working on a, a sign that we will be placing at each condo to show kind of what our rules are on the beach, but we're also waiting for clarification on that as well. Um, so from a public works standpoint, we do whatever we can to help both DEP, FWC, and Clearwater Marine Aquarium to get these little turtles to the water. You have any questions for me with Public Works? Sure. Yeah, I think the uh, trash cans are for collection uh, stuff that the accident. Thank you. Yes, it definitely helps us a lot. Unfortunately, they do. They are a little bit late. We're trying to figure out something with that, but that's... No, because the way that they're picked up, and I don't think our friends from DEP would like that as well. well we appreciate that. Uh, we're, we're trying to figure out options with that. Um, we also have our friends to the south have the same kind of toter, so we're going to see what they do. But we try we empty the trash every morning to ensure that if there is wind and they do tip over that the trash is not going out but we also have people that like to tip the trash cans over cuz it's funny we do so the the bigger items can't go into the broy hill because the compactor we sent a truck out before to pick all that stuff out of the trash can, and then the other, the broil goes out. Thank you. I appreciate that. 
I'm going to say is it good morning or good afternoon. Uh, I'm Corey Snyder. Some of you may know me in the city here. I've been here about seven years. Um, part of our duties with the sheriff's office is we do early morning patrols. We, we see the turtle people almost every morning. Uh, we have several functions out on the beach. Uh, some are obstructions on the beach that are left out. City ordinances prohibit leaving personal items on the beach. We go through and we check to see if people have left items out. We red tag them. Um, they are subject to impoundment by the city if they're left out multiple days, but we try to inform the people that you can't leave your chairs or your umbrellas and your beach tents and stuff like that. So we do a beach run early before the sun's up, which, which opens up a lot of things because we see the, the turtle tracks. Uh, we see uh, nesting turtles, hatching turtles. We also see the lighting conditions out there when it's still dark. And we also receive reports from the Clearwater Aquarium on uh, false crawls, uh, disorientation reports, and then if we see something that's obviously wrong with the condominiums or houses, we address that as quickly as we can. We'll make contact with the, the owners or the, the association, tell them that there's a potential problem with their lighting, uh, ways to correct their lighting, and or if they can't correct it, the, the solution is to turn it off, just have it dark. Um, sometimes that's not always possible, but we, we try to find the best course of correction for each individual building. If we do have a, a major issue and we have a property that's not complying with it, we have a code enforcement process where they're, they're served with a certified letters, another certified letter, and then if we have to, we can take it to the special magistrate and find them in violation of the code, the lighting code, and that's an extreme case there. And then if found in violation, they could be subject to daily fines. So that, that would be the code enforcement process for it. Um, other than that, same thing, holes, obstructions, uh, animals aren't allowed on the, dogs aren't allowed on the beach, have to be on a leash, service animal only, um, and that's really about it. We perform a early morning and an afternoon at minimum beach patrol, and we have the road deputies that do it also. The biggest thing with being on the beach is we're, we drive way low on the wet, wet sand because typically, you know, they, they try to lay their, their nests up in the dry sand, so we're, we're all aware of that. So, anybody have any questions for me? Yes, sir. To some of the hotels and the condos, because uh, I know this year it seems like there's a lot less uh, tents and things left on the beach, like a year or so ago. We, we've it like there was always, you know, we've it, it comes and goes. I've had years where it's every day we have stuff out there. This year has been pretty clean, in, in my opinion. I've seen less stuff left out there than I have in the last couple of years. I don't know whether they're, you know, we're, we're supposed to also post on the buildings that they're, they're not supposed to leave stuff out there as well. Yeah, we've, we've done a lot of education in the last couple of years. We've posted flyers in the elevators. We've posted them. We've given them to the maintenance. And we also have just talked to the maintenance guys to let them know, to let their visitors know that you can't leave your items overnight. Yeah, and I think it's the word has gotten out that we will take it. Yeah, I think because this year it seems like there's a lot less out there. It is. It That's has good. been much easier this year, for sure. Good. Yes. I just want to thank Public Works for giving the Clearwater Marine Aquarium a place to house their equipment for free to monitor for sea turtle nests every year. This is the first year we're in the city, and it's been a huge help. Um, so thank you very much to Public Works for providing that. And thank you to the Sheriff's Office for being very diligent in talking to uh, homeowners and property owners about their lighting because we can, we're starting to see a difference in sea turtle friendly lighting here in Madeira and we're really thankful for that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you both, Megan and Corey. So you've heard about what we do here at the city, but obviously we don't do, we do very little. Uh, we, we have a lot of partners. Obviously, from the aquarium, you'll hear from some of them today, but I'm going to bring up several of them, so I'd like to bring up the Water Warrior Alliance. They'll tell you a little bit about what they do and how they help all of this work together. Come on. Hello. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jenna Byrne. I am the founder and current president of the Water Warrior Alliance. Our organization focuses on marine debris removal. Um, we partner with like-minded businesses and organizations throughout Pinellas County, all the way down to the Keys at this point, 
um, that want to achieve the same common goal that we have of you know, stopping plastic pollution, utilizing plastic alternative options, and just being more conscious of our local environment. Um, we partner with a lot of the different groups that are here today. Keep Pinnells Beautiful was one of our first sponsors, uh, partners, and we um, now are starting to work with Clearwater Aquarium in the city of Madeira Beach more. Um, our main marine debris removal program is going to be a device called a water goat, and it looks just like the swim area at the beach, and it collects um, floating buoys. Um, we have one right outside as an example for you. If you haven't uh, seen one before, you can identify out behind the building here. It's a yellow buoy system, and it collects surface debris from stormwater drain runoff. And so we get out in um, kayaks or clean from the surface via nets and scoop out the debris. Uh, we work with um, Keep Pinellas Beautiful and the EPA doing an EPA ETAP analysis, so escape trash analysis protocol. So we sort the trash based on you know, five main categories and log how degraded it is. Um, we do um, write down labels identifying markers or organization names that are on the type of debris, and we try to approach them to use plastic alternative options with setting them up with a different partner that we have, whether it's sugarcane or compostable items that they can switch over to. Um, we do try to endorse anybody that partners with us or vendors at our events to not utilize any single-use items, single plastics, of course, is one of the highest uh, culprits. And um, we love this particular uh, vendor called Stream to Sea, and so it's one of the only sunblock or uh, organizations that aren't getting sued by the FDA for having different kind of harmful chemicals that bleach coral or cause cancer. And so what's neat about their, their products is it's uh, made out of sugar cane instead of single-use plastic. And so besides the water goats, we host uh, scuba, patty, project aware, dive against debris events. So we go out with a lot of different of our dive partners here in Pinellas County. We have a few upcoming events with Gulfport Dive Shop, but we've worked with several of the different dive organizations. And they'll provide uh, free equipment. Um, free charters available for you to get out and clean uh, via the waterway if you'd like. But if you're not scuba certified, you can always join in our waterborne events um, with uh, Freedom Boat Club or a few different kayak partners that we have, like Sweetwater Kayaks. They'll provide free transportation out on the water for you as well. We can bring you out to an island and provide supplies for you um, that Keep Pinellas Beautiful always sets us up with um, if you'd like to help that way. And then we do uh, themed beach cleanups, mostly for awareness. Um, you know, luckily we have the city of Madeira Beach and a lot of local city municipalities that beach rake and maintain our local beaches to such pristine conditions. So we never really find that much debris out on the beaches, honestly. Um, the number one way that trash enters our waterways is through our stormwater drains. And so it dumps out into the local waterways that way. That's why we find the water goats the most effective way to remove trash from our local environment here. Um, so we have a lot of different outreach events. We have an annual trash collection tournament. And that's this uh, October. So we give away 10 to 20 grand in prizes each year for collecting trash. There's a waterborne and a shoreside division. So we definitely endorse you to come out and be recognized for all the hard work you do as volunteers for pulling trash out of our local waterways and shorelines. And then we have a two week overnight summer camp each year to um, in inspire our local youth to become environmental stewards. We start off with getting them scuba certified and we take them around Pinellas County and expose them to a lot of our different specialist partners that um, you know, give them inspiration on what they want to grow up to be as an adult. But the second week we end up in the Florida Keys and they do coral restoration. So each year we showcase different partners um, with the Alliance because we've grown so much. We like to highlight everybody and uh, you know, everybody can get that common goal faster. So the city of Madeira Beach you know, supports us in so many ways and does a lot here. Um, so you guys had brought up the nesting lighting before. Our next event out here on Madeira Beach is going to be June 8th for World Oceans Day. And so we partner with the city of Madeira Beach, Keep Pinellas Beautiful, Clearwater Aquarium is going to be out at that event, Saltwater Hippie, and a few other locals here um, in the Madeira Beach area. And so we're going to be cleaning up the beach as Clearwater Aquarium stands near all of the different turtle nests, educating the public on the importance of sea turtles. And so we are lucky enough to have the city of Madeira Beach support all those efforts, and they are funding uh, Duke Energy to transfer a lot of the public roadway lights over to that amber lighting that Clearwater Aquarium educated us all out before. Um, so we definitely endorse you to come out to that event, clean up the local beach. Um, you know, if you have any other questions, you can always come see me on my table outside or visit us online at the Water Warrior, excuse me, waterwarrioralliance.org. Um, so we appreciate uh, everybody being a part of the solution to plastic pollution. So thank you. Uh, any questions? Yes. How much uh, debris do we actually have? 
submerged debris? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously uh, along the beach we can, you know, see things visually, but how much is actually submerged? 80% uh, of the debris ends up in the water. And so, do honestly... We have, do we have uh, areas where there's an accumulation of maybe uh, industrial waste or appliances or engine blocks or... Um, so there's a few different areas where trash would accumulate, but it's not the same as like the Great Lakes or the Mississippi River with how Florida is. One of my uh, volunteers and good friends in the back is actually um, a staff member of FWC and he does GIS mapping. So um, he would be the specialist to consult with on that. But um, there's not a lot of trash accumulation points uh, in this area. And so we find still with this particular um, peninsula that we are in St. Pete or in Florida that the water goats do work best to collect the debris before they enter into the waterways because um, we don't have meandering streams where there's accumulation points on one side of a water body where it's all piling up. We do have a lot of derelict vessels um, from hurricanes and FWC consults with different contractors throughout the state of Florida that will go ahead and pull those derelict vessels because ultimately over time there's a lot of contaminants that can enter the waterway with them. Um, but it depends on the location that we're cleaning. So if we clean a, a water goat, I'm going to pull out a lot of single-use plastic bottles and styrofoam. And obviously those break down, microplastics, microbeads. Um, but we have beach cleanups, and we do different themed ones. Our last one was a Pokemon Go beach cleanup. This one's a turtle nesting beach cleanup to try and make it fun. But bottle caps, cigarette butts, face masks, those are top there. And then the scuba events, it's a lot of rope and tackle um, and anchors. So a lot of tourists or you know, different individuals will go to our little artificial reefs or islands that we have around here, and they give up at the end of the day when they can't get their anchor out, and they just cut the line. Um, and there's obviously a lot of fishing line. And you know, we have groups like Tampa Bay Watch um, or FWC that have collection devices throughout the county at different docks to try and prevent it from blowing in the water. And so um, you know, we work with a lot of different charter captains, bait and tackle shops, and endorse um, you know, sustainable fishing, like utilizing circle hooks or special types of monofilament so it doesn't affect our waterways. Any other questions? I'd just like to say the uh, Sheriff's Department did an excellent job in those derelict vessels because that was a, a big, big problem. And it looks so much better now. So, I have one more question related. In those neighborhoods that have the pervious concrete, they have, uh, at certain areas, they have like the double sewer caps. Is, are you familiar with that? Are one of those like a caption, a captured device? The baffle box, is that what he's talking about? Yeah. So, yep, thank you guys so much, and thank you um, for everything you guys do. Um, yeah, thank you, Jim. Yeah, in Boca Ciega. We have baffle boxes, if that's what you're referring yeah, to. Yeah, the double sewer cap kind of arrangement. Yeah, so there's there's different different areas in that where that it it, it, it breaks up the, the sediment before it goes into the water. It's like a filtration right. type. Does, does, does it capture plastics or cigarette butts? And it will. Like that? Yeah, I actually have several places where we have baffle boxes or we have CDS units on 140th, and we also have the stormwater station on 141st where we pull a tremendous amount of debris. Out and of then, that. And then the other situations, it just runs right into the bay. The storm water, water would just run into the In our system. older system areas, yes. Okay. But we are working, we are upgrading our stormwater systems. Okay, right. Sorry. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jenna. And the, Darryl, the sheriff's office with their contractor removed 22 boats from the area right back here off of Bay Pines, the Madera Beach Fundamental. 22. Originally, they had nine. And then we actually had some people who brought their, they were in their boat and said, my boat's going to sink any day now, so could you please take it? Um, and then other people that drove up to the park where the staging area was and said, yeah, my boat's over there and it's going to sink anytime, so please take it. They signed it over, and so that's how I ended up removing 22 boats. They now have a much better process that one a derelict or abandoned boat or sunken boat is identified they they will they begin the process to remove it so you will this hopefully will never happen again that you have that many abandoned and derelict boats in one specific geographic area so also the state legislature did pass a the bill was approved to ban smoking on public beaches and in public parks i think it's just awaiting the governor's signature although next week the legislature will reconvene to discuss property insurance so flood insurance, wind insurance, et cetera. So the governor still has not signed that, nor the budget as well, which is a big one. Uh, also, 
again, remind everybody the tables outside. If you do, there's another organization out there, the Trash Turtles, that many of you are familiar with. They have on their buckets a little detachable plastic container. That's when you're out picking up trash, that's where the cigarette butts go. And then I believe they recycle them somehow. I need to find out exactly what they do with them, but uh, that's an interesting component to, for picking up cigarette butts, which if anybody's ever picked up around or anywhere, you're going to find cigarette butts no matter where you go. I tell people it's so kind of 1960s to still smoke, but eh, either way, personal decisions, right, to do that. So we'll bring up now Keep Pinellas Beautiful, a big, big partner. Awesome. Thanks for having us today. So I'm, ooh, do that. I'm Devin Frank. I'm the education program coordinator for Keep Pinellas Beautiful. We're very excited to be here today and to partner with uh, Madeira, Madeira Beach, and um, basically all the organizations that are here today. And uh, yeah, we're just uh, basically we're a small uh, nonprofit, environmental nonprofit. And our goal really is to work with the community. We educate, we engage people, we um, inspire, and we try to empower people to try to make just little tiny differences in their everyday behavior to help protect the environment. That's really what we're all about. Um, and here, of course, we're we're here today to you know help to uh, encourage people to try to do what we can to help protect the turtles. Of course, now that nesting season has started, um, not that turtles shouldn't be protected not during nesting season. That would be good to do that year-round. Um, but yeah, so as, as Lindsay very well said, uh, we try to keep the beach clean, dark, and flat uh, during this time of year. And we like to emphasis, you know, for sure, on the clean. So one of the big things that we do with Keep Pinellas Beautiful is we do uh, not just beach cleanups, but also community cleanups year-round. Um, and as Jenna said, 80% of that marine debris that we find in the ocean, it starts from land. So it is about not just picking up on the beach, but picking up in our neighborhoods. When that litter gets on the ground and there's wind, there's rain, it's going to wash right into your storm drains. There's nothing in the storm drain that stops it and collects it. It's going to go straight down into the drain and out into the streams, the rivers, and out into the ocean. So that's why it's up to all of us to make sure that, number one, we're not littering, because that's not a great thing. Um, and yeah, big problem about all this, too. Like One of the most common types of litter is that is plastic. So that single-use plastic especially are those types of items that can cause a lot of harm. Uh, right now, the estimate is that about 8 million metric tons of plastic is getting into our ocean every single year. Um, that number is increasing because we're still making more and more plastic. But that's about the same amount as a, a full garbage truck full of plastic that's being dumped into the ocean every minute. Uh, it's about the same weight as about 1.5 trillion plastic grocery bags. So if you were to stack that many grocery bags end to end, it would reach from the earth to the sun 65 times. That's how much plastic is getting into our ocean right now. And it's just, it's all about basically people's choices and responsibility and behavior. So, you know, we were here to try to encourage people not to litter and to understand. Um, it's all about reduce, reuse, recycle. It's really about, and especially emphasizing the reduce and the reuse portion to make sure that we are slowing down that waste stream, to make sure that we're using things as much as we can before we move on to the next thing that we need to use. Um, but yeah, otherwise on top of doing uh, the, the, the beach cleanups, the community cleanups, we also plant native plants, we remove invasive species, uh, we plant trees, we do gardening projects. It's, it's about keeping Pinellas beautiful. We like to clean up and green up where we live. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for having us today. And if anyone has any questions for what we do or wants to get involved with us, we're always looking for volunteers to help us with what we do. Do you do any outreach like in schools at all? Absolutely. That's my job. Yep, I'm the education program coordinator. So yeah, I, I can give you one of my cards. Reach out to me. Uh, I go to schools all the time and talk about uh, just different environmental topics. I'd be very happy to. program with a lot of the hotels? We do. Yeah, that's it's one of our brand new programs. So it's an eco-hospitality program that just launched really in the last year or so. Um, so it's still growing, still in its infancy. Uh, but basically, we partner with hotels and restaurants, uh, basically with other organizations to help encourage uh, sustainability within the, the hospitality industry. So we work to train uh, the staff, give them presentations. Uh, we do eco-tours and other uh, types of activities, not just with their staff, but with their guests and things too. Um, you know, we do special events like cleanups and things like that for the hotels, the restaurants, and that type of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Keep Pinellas beautiful. And again, thank you all very much for coming out uh, when you do leave and you can use it even on your reusable containers. Please take one of our 75th anniversary koozies. Uh, we like some of the other organizations we are. Um, you can purchase some of the items that are over here on this table, shirts, um, hats, prints of some of Madeira Beach's history, but also please visit all of the other um, vendors that we do have our our trash turtle is here in the back. CO, say hello. That's it? Do you want to give her Megan? Or come on up here. I know she's not shy to speak in public, so. No, um, hey, so um, Trash Turtles is a nonprofit organization that I started when I was in the fourth grade. After, actually, I spoke here in this very room to the uh, previous city council mayor about a couple of different um, different ordinances I thought would be cool to pass to try and um, limit the waste that would be put out on our beaches. And I started Trash Trolls afterward to still keep making a difference even if the ordinances didn't get passed. So my motto for Trash Turtles is to always leave with three, which means wherever you are, home, school, um, work, sorry, um, you can always pick up three pieces of trash and leave with it. And if we all did that, we could save the planet. So that's the Trash Turtles in a nutshell. So appreciate Robin and all of you guys out there uh, keep it all as beautiful, Clearwater Marine. Thank you guys so much for everything you guys do, or everything you guys do, and supporting us. And yeah, so thank you so much. I think she's quite modest. I think so you were ten when you started the organization. I, you know, quite an inspiration certainly for a lot of kids. And I think my two daughters are pretty big fans as well. So. Again, thank you all so much for coming out. Please, again, stop by all the tables outside. Thank you. Thank you for helping to keep our slice of paradise two miles long and smile wide. <laughs> Have a great day.